an interview with diver, author, photographer, instructor, Chris Mears. Chris has dove all over the world, UK, Central America, Maldives, Australia, Palau, and now Chris is stationed in Portugalera, Philippines. Now this is part one of a two-part interview. The whole interview was about one hour, so about 30 minutes each. Stay tuned, here's the interview. Chris Mears is here with us today, and Chris just published a book. Uh, he must be so proud. I know I will be proud. I'm working on a couple books. This is awesome news. Chris, welcome to the channel. Thank you, Jim. Good morning to you. Good morning. And, and you're coming from where now? And I'm the international sales manager of Scandi Divers Resort in Puerto Galera, Philippines, uh, in a little place called Calapan City, about one hour from Puerto Galera, where I, uh, where I work. I was trying to get a bead on where you're at. So I'm sorry. It's it's by land from Puerto Galera or it's by yeah, water? Yeah, just, yeah. It takes about an hour to drive there. It's about 55 kilometers away. It's, it's basically the capital city of Mindoro Island where, uh, where Puerto Galera is based. So yeah, I normally work at home doing sales and marketing now for, uh, for oh, really? a resort there. So yeah, yeah. Gotcha. I want to I want to uh, talk about that a little. So the just at the yeah. end of the book, you really start talking about how you kind of transitioned into the the marketing and sales. So I do want to yes. hear about that. But let's let's save that for for when you get old like me and boring. So <laughs> 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 let's get to the let's get to the adventure stuff first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> Alrighty, folks, folks who want to order this, um, so what? You've got soft cover. It's electronic. I saw it's Kindle as well. Is there an audio book as well on it or? There is an audio book. I've been talking about it. Some people have requested it, actually. So I've been studying a little bit on how to do audio books. And if, uh, if I can get it done sometime, then that'll be the, the next priority. But uh, it's only available yeah, I, on paperback, paperback I, and, and uh, ebook right now. I see you started out in the UK. And yes, I, yeah. I want to hear your impression. So I, you know, I've been to the UK. I've never dove there. And everything mm -hmm. I read about the diving in the UK, I think to myself, these people must absolutely love diving because it just sounds miserable to me. <laughs> I mean, what, except for the basking yeah. sharks, except for the baskings. Other than that, it just sounds like a lot of work. What, what's it, it like? Does. Yeah, it's, it's really, it's a lot of work. You know, I, I've actually only done uh, probably 30, 30 or 40 dives in the UK in total. So when I was younger, I, I went out and I bought the dry suit and all this, you know, thick hoods and everything and seven mil gloves you know, and for me, it just took the fun out of it. You know, you, yeah. even to do shore dives, you know, you're, <laughs> you, you're getting so tired before even entering the water. You know, it's oh, really yeah. difficult. And then in the summertime, the water temperature is okay, not great, but, you know, you have the heat then. So, you know, you're really sweating so much, you know, getting yourself ready to go in the water. And, uh, yeah, yeah it, it's, it's, it's a tough, tough sell, you yeah. know, for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you're, Especially and, the guys uh, go in the quarries and that as well. You know, I've never been diving. Yeah, in the quarry quarries, diving. I've never been really, one. It's that really popular in the UK. It doesn't sound yeah, sexy yeah, at all. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I actually, where I'm from in Wales, there's actually a big, uh, big quarry there. It's called the National Diving Centre, and every weekend that place is rammed full. You know, and all the dive shops take their students there to do open water training and other courses as well. So, but yeah, it's really interesting some of the you know they have a lot of shipwrecks there which are really nice yeah. but it's just it's really challenging diving you know you've got really strong currents in places right you know typically very bad visibility you know and obviously yes. colder water as well so i heard you know, they're definitely yeah to be honest I, I didn't really see that many fish either you know when i was there you Why know so yeah. I, I don't really know if they're all being fished yeah. out or yeah there's never really you don't see the pictures of huge schools of fish right in the uk like you do in other places so yeah i think it's more more historical diving in, in a way you know where they do a lot of shipwrecks and that kind of thing so that's that would be the key thing yeah yeah is but, it also um, part is it a lot of rib diving uh yeah yeah it's a lot of that as well yeah yeah so what's that um, like so you're because i heard right you're not you don't have your gear on so you're what you're plopping in the water and they're tossing your gear is, is that how that works yeah 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 to be honest with you, I'm not sure if I'm ever going to dive in the UK again. You know, to, <laughs> <Enough> <laughs> it would take me a lot. Enough yeah, said. it would take me Enough a lot said. to go there. You know, but yeah. uh, uh, and only recently I've seen on YouTube a lot of um, basking shark uh, footage. Yes, yeah, I saw one basking shark once when I was on a trip down into Cornwall in the the southwest of the, the UK there, 
uh, went out right. on a boat to try and see them. So yeah, they're amazing, you know, and the, the second yeah. biggest fish in the world after the whale shark, yeah. right? So yeah, they're pretty cool to see. And they're, they're close to the surface normally, you know, when they're in their season. So um, yeah, that's also pretty good as well. But early in the book, so this happened to be just after UK, you had a section about breathing techniques for relaxation and longer dives. And I, I did a video on, on that. And that's it, something I, I'm interested in. Is there, is there anything in particular that, that you could quickly touch on or is that too, too involved? What? Um, you know, it, it's just really about being relaxed, you know, you, you, they, and you're really drilled, right? When, especially when you're an instructor, you, you, you're telling people not to, you know, not to hold you down, never, never hold your breath underwater. You know, it's, it's very, very dangerous and everything like that. So, you know, you, that's put into your mind very early as a diver. But I think once you've done a few dives and you get a bit more experience and you can start to just really slow your breathing down, you know, and just really dive more. You know, the only way you can really get better is to keep diving more, right? And then after, right. for me, once I've done about, 60 or 70 dives and I could realize hang on I actually don't need you know it's okay to hold my breath a little, little bit here you know yeah. while I'm while I'm swimming along so it's just really getting your breathing technique down to right. to somewhere where you're, you're totally relaxed and yeah then you know it before you know you you're extending your dive times from you know 30 to 40 minutes at the start when you're new and you're kind of <laughs> you know air hogging it yeah and into you know an hour hour and a half time so yeah it's just, it's just really becoming relaxed and, you know, to be part of the water, I guess you could say. Gotcha. Yeah. You know, when, when you, um, and by the way, sorry, you're, you, you're an instructor and you, I see you've yes. been an instructor yeah. for 12 years, I think, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I, I know that like in, in some of the books, I can't remember if it's Patty or Nellie, but you know, they, they talk to uh, like, oh, your breathing should be, you know, slow, steady, like just zoot, you know, boom, just that way the whole yeah. time. And, and, and for me, you know, my breathing, I guess it's a combination between relaxation, but also my buoyancy, right? Because I'm thinking where I am in the water. Am I a little heavy yeah. at the moment? So I'm keeping my lungs a little fuller. Am I a little light? So I'm going to kind of, you know, keep my, my lungs a little emptier. So, you know, I, I think it's it's a bit, a bit misleading for, for, uh, for newer divers to just give them that thing while well, you're just a breathing machine, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you have to learn that as an instructor to, you know, because it's, it, of course, it's very dangerous if you, if you help hold your breath and you fly up to the surface, right? Very, very dangerous. But, um, you know, if you can just chill yourself out down there and take your time. Some places you can't do that, you know, if there's a strong current and everything, you know, you just can't, you know, you can't yeah. control anything basically, right? So, yeah. you know, some dives are quicker than others, but if there's no current and everything and just a nice, easy, easy dive, then, uh, yeah, just take your time, you know, and breathe easy, you know, enjoy yeah. the water. Yeah. And just try and be relaxed. This is the best thing to do. Question for you. Have you ever personally or run into divers? So, you know, the whole thing with the, the CO2 headaches, with skip breathing. Have you ever run into that yourself or have you had that happen with divers or? Um, I've never really experienced that. Obviously over the years, there's been people with headaches. Uh, I normally put that down to a bit of dehydration more than anything, to be honest, uh -huh. you know, so we, we keep, uh, especially on the liverboards when you're doing, you know, f up to five dives a day, you know, so that time you oh, I have a bit of a headache. I'm going to skip this dive. So yeah, okay, please, you know, go and have a couple of glasses of water right now. But I haven't never really thought about this, the CO2 buildup. I know, I know some places are checking now, right, for CO2, but uh yeah, I haven't really come across that in my in my career so far. Only headaches, gotcha. uh, maybe yeah, from rum, rum induced headaches, maybe as well. You know. Perhaps. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've read a bunch of that. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I've had some some divers. Actually, my my brother used to, uh, you know, he was a skip reader, and he used to, yeah, consistently have these headaches, and it was hard for him mm. to get out of. Every once in a while, I have a diver, but on liverboards. So I don't remember. I think you did your dive master on a liverboard, didn't you? No, I, I did my dive master in uh, oh, in, a res Mexico? in a dive shop in in, Hon in Honduras in Utila. Honduras, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, how often is seasickness a problem on these uh, in your in your travels? <laughs> uh, I um, it all depends, really, because I mean, for Palau, for an example, you know, the boat rides there are very short, and the the mothership is kept in very calm water anyway for the whole time. So I would say Palau is the best place not to get seasick because you're, oh, you know, you're on, on the boat for a maximum ride of probably two or three hours, 
like to get mm. from Karo to Peleliu as an example. That, that's the longest uh, journey, you know, down down to there. So, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, so it can be a little bit rough there. But um, uh, where I worked in Honduras, it can get very very rough, especially traveling from Utila to to Roatan. You know, that is uh, especially if the east wind is blowing. Then you know you're mm. talking, you know, sometimes five to eight meter wave sometimes you know we're going head and straight in into that you know oh, so wow. yeah there was and, and yeah there's quite a few times that? where five people eight, that's, just um, that's just basically that's just crossing over between the islands so once we get there we have shelter you know we can either go on the either end of the island you know and hide gotcha. away from the weather there but just actually the the physical crossing between the islands was pretty pretty rough gotcha. um same as the maldives uh, when you cross in between the atolls can be a little bit rough but uh, yeah, not, do you have not any too advice bad. For yeah, folks? not too bad. Because I have some. Because I have some folks who are just like chronic. And do, do you have any good medication or or any any, any advice? Um, we used to give out ginger tea. Actually, that was one thing that we gave out to people. Yeah, I've even seen people with bottles of water with some pieces of ginger in them as well. You know, like chunks of ginger. So uh -huh. I, I never actually. Well, I drink the ginger tea, but. Uh, don't usually get seasick after being uh, yeah. on the boats for so many years. Still the odd occasion, yeah. but uh, <laughs> yeah, I read that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. What's, yeah, what's your yeah. biggest fear when it comes to divers? Actually, basically, the, the biggest fear was, you know, is um, of course people uh, can have a heart attack basically underwater. Right? You can see, you know, the the age of our groups on the Liverpool are typically between, on average, I would say, you know. 45 to 65 sort of age so uh yeah we had some pretty uh pretty big lumps you know came on the boat you know sometimes so oh, wow. you always when when they first come onto the boat you know you automatically start to look at them and think which one do you think uh you know could oh, be an issue with you on the trip you know just kind of oh yeah you know this guy's like uh 300 pounds or something like that you know so uh yeah. he has a lot of weight and everything and you know so he could be someone that we need to keep a bit of an extra eye on underwater right. sort of thing you know so uh yeah that's just really the the main thing we looked for you know was uh basically the size of people you know <laughs> Which oh, interesting bad, so but, you know uh, yeah i yeah. totally wouldn't have expected that from from reading yeah. and from seeing where you've been i would have thought you know you'd be afraid of someone getting blown away in a current or something I, that would have thought my my fear yeah they, there's that as well you have to keep a very close eye on people in, in the especially the channel dives in the Maldives, an example, you know, we had a, we did have uh, two missing divers for about half an hour the one day actually, which is very worrying. They, they got blown inside the channel. So we, luckily we found them on the surface after a bit of a search, but we were about to, uh, you know, about to call the coast guard sort of thing, you know, and trying wow. to, you know, yeah. expand the search, but luckily we found them uh, places like blue corner in Palau as well. You know, you can't mess around there. Um, yeah. Especially, uh, Peleliu Corner as well is notorious, you know, they're very, very notorious. So everybody's got to be, and typically for those dives, we will send out pretty much every single dive, dive staff we have on the boat, you know, to yeah. have an extra few numbers so we can have like someone hanging back from the main kind of hooking areas. You know, we'll have a couple of guys at the back in uh -huh. case anybody does, uh, their, their reef hook comes loose maybe, and then the current gotcha. will just take them away. And then we can kind of grab them, you know, as uh, as they go past sort of thing. So, uh, yeah, those got to be on your on your toes for them dives. You can't take your eye off the group for a second, really, you know. So, absolutely, it's, huh? yeah, it's really very very important, you know. Yeah. We never actually, when I was working in Palau, we never really had any bad instance like of losing anybody or, you know. So, so that was that was good. I think that shows the the true professionalism of the crew, you know. Really, when you yeah, you know, you're in a four to six knot current sort of thing you know and everybody's mask is shaking you know in the hooking area and uh, you know the regulators trying to be pulled out of their mouth you know by the by yeah. the current and everything so yeah they very well trained well drilled and yeah they have a pretty solid okay. reputation for that as well do you recommend for yeah. folks in a situation like that like i i've never used but i've, I've read a lot what is it called eperb those uh personal beacons or something like yeah, that. yeah yeah i know some boats around the world that is they'll give you one the boat will have a, oh. a bunch of them and they'll actually give you one to use while you're, you're diving mm -hmm. because some areas are very remote like i'm pretty sure they use them in the galapagos maybe and okay. uh, cocos island 
Uh, even in Tubataha Reef in the Philippines, actually, I know one or two liverboards, they also give them out as well to, to, to every one of their divers as well. So, yeah, yeah so I'd want one those, those places, pilots. you know, you can, if you're drifting for a few hours, you, you know, you're in the middle of no man's land, right? So, yeah, you know, that's it used to give you an extra, uh, <laughs> extra way of being saved. <laughs> yeah, if I'm going to yeah, end yeah, up in Indonesia yeah. or something, I want to go by. Yeah, plane, yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah, like yeah. in uh, Crystal Bay, right? You know, that kind of place in the... Uh, Musa Penida, right? That's also another place where you can be gone, you know, yes, <laughs> in a very short yeah. space of time if the boatman's not on his game. I'm oh, sorry, you were talking about in Puerto Galera. So actually, uh, you know, it came back to me when you were talking Verde Island and you were talking Canyons because yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been there. They're pretty, yes. They can get pretty hairy, right? Yeah, they can. Yeah, that's another place where you have to, especially, um, yeah, I mean, both areas, Canyons and Verde Island, you know, they can be notorious, you know, and I've been in, uh, that there's, you know, on Verde Island anyway, there's every year, there's, there's usually a typical couple of deaths at least, you know, from people there who get caught in the down current there. So we, luckily we haven't, none of my people have been caught in that, but uh, yeah, every year there's, there's typically a couple of deaths or accidents there. Me, and the same I with canyons. The down current there. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you gotta be careful. You know, when you come around that one point, you know, if you don't whip around there quickly, then, you know, the only way is down pretty much. So, yeah, you've got to be really, really careful in that place as well. So, uh, Mate, it was yeah, so even incredible. We, we had, we had two dives there. We had two dives there. And uh, we were two guys and two women, our wives. Yeah. And, uh, and we went. First dive was like glass. Yeah, flat. yeah, yeah. And then we came back for the second dive. It got blown away. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've been on the canyons many times, and um, I had to abort one dive once there with because I had six divers, and uh, we got down to the one area, and I said in the briefing, do not swim away from the wall, you know, otherwise mm. you're gone. And of course, there was one diver, he just got a little bit too far away from the wall, and then you know, he started to get further and further away and he was kicking like mad, kicking like mad, trying to get back to us. But I knew, you know, it's, it's all over then. So I had to abort the dive. So I had to grab the other five guys, you know, abort the dive. Let's go and, and catch up with a guy that's, uh, you know, about to be drifted away. And, wow. you know, you can't mess around there because even on a, an average dive there, when you come up, you know, you, you're talking, you're about sometimes two or three miles away, you know, from the actual dive site when you actually surface. So, Incredible, you know, it's it? really, really strong there and very dangerous. So we have to be very, very careful. And, and we don't take people there sometimes, you know, if they're yeah. a bit inexperienced we, and they'll say, they, they'll kind of say, oh yeah, I really want to go to the canyons. And they've got 20 dives, you know, and they haven't dived in the current before. So, we kind of say for your for your own safety we don't want to take you to the canyons you know so and they kind yeah. of get a bit mad and oh it's supposed to be the best dive site blah, blah, blah. you know yeah. but uh, yeah you got to be very very careful there there's missing yeah, diver switches it. there a lot I've, I've been out on oh. uh, probably probably 10 times you know going out searching for for missing divers mm. uh, from from the canyons as well and we find them you know they, they normally they'll come up sometimes four or five miles away, you know, from the, uh, from the dive site, you know, heading See, down want, the, uh, the channel there. Perks, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, mostly it's the, you know, sometimes the boatmen will switch off, you know, for a couple of minutes or something. And then before you know it, you know, you've got 20 boats out looking for a couple of divers, you know. So it, it's really the boatmen, they're usually very, very good, but there's been a couple of instances where they've, they've, they fell asleep on the boat or something or they just weren't paying attention. And then before you know it, we've got a couple of guys missing. But uh, yeah, mostly it ends well. You know, we, we find them a few yeah. miles down the channel, basically. Oh, but uh, yeah, so yeah. yeah, it can be pretty hairy yeah. sometimes around there. <laughs> you know what? When I, when I was there, uh, I don't know, maybe it was 10, 15 years ago, I was doing my instructor training there with Asia, no, Tech Asia. I think it yeah, was yeah. Dave. Yeah, Dave, and, yeah. Uh, Dave Ross. They had me do like my final exam was having, having, I think, one of them as a student on a tech dive in canyons. Oh, so okay. it, was, it, was, it was doing, you know, three-meter stops in that. It was really challenging, man. It was... Yeah, yeah. You no, know, yeah, it was... It's anyway, crazy, there. It's absolutely yeah, crazy. It's, even, even doing your safety stop there, you know, it's very, very crazy because you've got both up and down currents, you know. So typically, when you have a group going up, then 
you know, the dive computers are going crazy because they're just going up and down a few meters, yeah. you know, in the currents. And it's beep, 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 you know, everyone's, yes. uh, yeah, yeah, so you have to be really, uh, yeah, really careful on the, uh, on the ascent there as well. You know, it can be pretty, a little bit tricky there. What do you advise people uh, on a down current? Uh, well, don't get into one for a start. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. stick with the dive guide, you know, don't... Mm -hmm. uh, don't take a chance. If you hear a dive briefing that says this is dangerous, you know, really pay attention because some people don't take it seriously, you know, with a maybe overconfidence or, yeah, I can do this dive. It's no problem. But uh, yeah, you have to, I've never really been in trouble in a, in a down current. You know, I just inflate my jacket a little bit, you know, to, to try and get up out of it and just kick up and just look, just watch your computer, you know, really, really watch your computer because, if you don't like even at canyons a couple of times we've started to go up and some people supposed to be with us you know and they they didn't realize they were in a down current you know so mm -hmm. you know they they didn't realize they were getting deeper and deeper from us so you have to really stop banging your tank you know so hard come up come up come up come up you know so uh yeah just really <laughs> stick with the dive master you know stay stay the same level as them on the ascent because they they know what they're doing you know they know if they're going up or down by uh by a few meters you know so really stay the same level as them the entire time, I would say, mm, you know, when, okay. when you get out of these uh, currents, yeah. yeah. All righty. All righty, uh, yeah. so let me see, it was page around 122, you had, you had your, I think, does everyone have a scuba poo story, do you think? Or, <laughs> <laughs> do you think, is that a standard? I, I wonder. Uh, who knows, who knows, yeah, I had to, uh, yeah. You know, the reason, uh, I wasn't going to put it in, and then I thought it tied in nicely with a little seahorse story at the end of it, you know. So I thought, oh, I'm going to go for it. You <laughs> know, just a little, yeah. bit of, uh, a little bit of toilet humor involved, you know. <laughs> but uh, you know what? I, I was going to There do are times when you... you're on a day boat and there's no head, you know. So just yeah. maybe you can use a little, a little bit of advice, you know, which way the water's going and everything like that, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, that yeah, and, and yeah. I have a story. I'm not going to tell it, but I, I was, I was wondering where I'm going to put that story someday. What's the right place? But uh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cool. Yeah, it it was just a it was just a fun day, you know, because I, I guess the, my friend who just passed away now, he was on that dive as well. And he was having trouble with a couple of students, you know, and they were being tossed around in the waves and everything. And then you know, it was just a uh, it was just nice to cover that whole day basically. So and and the uh, the toilet incident was was uh, was part of that day. So I thought, why not stick it in there? Yeah, <laughs> I had a gotcha. few comments from cool. people already, so I guess it's uh, yeah, I guess it's landed okay. <laughs> good stuff. Good stuff. Right. Ah, yeah. Something I forgot to ask on the last topic, actually, and you just touched on it again. So you mentioned about uh, folks, your your uh, like, you know, folks who look like they might not be uh, healthy, fit, or something like that. What, what's your what's your feeling? So. People, I don't know if they come around like this, but for me, like, you know, I look on my sign sheet and I see someone, oh, you know, they're open water certified. They have six dives and they haven't dove in three years or something. <laughs> I mean, did you used yeah, to get stuff like bells. that or what? Yeah, yeah. Alarm bells are ringing, you know. So, yeah, especially in Puerto Galera, you know, if we can have strong currents there on most of the reef dives there, you know. So, yeah, normally if it's like that, then we would we would recommend doing the refresher in the pool at least, you know, for a, for an hour or so just to get this, just to double check their skills and. You know, Do you ever get in the position where doing. there's because not everyone's time nice. or, or resources for that? Um. Yeah. Yeah. There's been and it's even on liverboards, I guess you know you don't have time to do refreshers half the time, right? So you just literally have to almost treat them as if they're going on their first open water dive, you know, for the first time, and you literally yes. stay holding onto their arm pretty much. You know, to to make sure that they're comfortable or uncomfortable, you know, whichever one, whichever yeah, way they're going to yeah. fall. But uh, yeah, you've got to keep a really close eye on them people. Very, very, especially, you know, when you work for companies which can have lawsuits and that kind of thing. Then you know, you have to be very, very safety conscious. You know, very, very. Otherwise, um, yeah, you'll be in court before you know it if anything goes wrong, right? So yeah, yeah, we really yeah. have to look after them guys who. Uh, you know, who are pretty inexperienced for sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's a tough one for me. I had something I'm always, yeah, very yeah. Often yeah. don't have the resources to do a refresher and, you know, yeah. folks come along and then you find out, Oh my gosh, like you said, this is like an open water student. kind of <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. 
<laughs> and you hope they're going to be okay, you know. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let me see here. So you, I, I read the book. You've you've never actually been bent, right? And you. No, I haven't actually. I'm. I'm quite surprised to be honest, because, you know, especially doing five dives a day every day, you know, for for many years, I, I've been very lucky. Um, maybe I was close to I think being bent actually a couple of years ago when I was diving in Koron and uh, Apple Reef, you know, just off Mindoro. And uh, it, I did quite a lot of deep dives in, in a week, you know, on the wrecks in Koron, they're about 100, between 100 and 140 feet, typically. So I was doing plenty of dives on them. And then we were doing deep dives in Apple to try and see hammerheads. And then, yeah, mm. the last, uh, the last, well, the one but last dive of the trip, I actually, I, um, I was trying to shoot a couple of uh, cuttlefish with my video camera and uh, just w- tried to go a little bit too deep and I and my heart start, started pumping really really quickly you know I was like oh my god you know mm. something's happening here so I actually mm. I aborted the dive and went up and did a pretty long safety stop and then uh, went back on the boat and just as a precaution just took some oxygen you know just uh, right. just to be safe and uh, just monitored myself for you know, for a couple of hours, but, um, mm. luckily I was, I was okay. And I survived another day. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. that was, uh, that was probably my biggest worry that I've had, you know, never had that heart beating in my chest really, really quickly. Yeah. You know? interesting. So, um, yeah, and I, I think uh, you mentioned there was just yeah, one person up, you knew who got bent or something. There was one of your, one person on your liveaboard once, maybe it was a staff. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, one of our old captains actually. Um, oh, right. Captain, he, yeah. yeah, he he was lifting weights, you know, oh, between right, right, when right, he was right. on deck. Yeah, yeah, he was lifting weights in between the dives and everything. Yeah. So, yeah, he just came up from a dive, and then he had very bad pain in his uh, elbows and his joints and everything, and then that was it. You know, he had to go. He had to get off the boat pretty much straight away, and they the chamber wasn't working in Palau at the time, so yeah. he had to fly into Guam to have yeah. the treatment. And then, of course, oh. you know he had he couldn't uh, he couldn't die. I'm not sure how. I mean, this was a few years ago now. I'm not sure if he's. I know he's not working in diving anymore, but uh, you know I don't know if he can dive anymore now. But uh, yeah, mm, just right. uh, yeah, lifting weights, you know, in between. You know what? Coincidentally, it's not the first time so, I've heard about that. I've heard other crazy. weight lifters. Yeah, crazy. Uh, I've heard that more than more than once, and you know I've heard that you know because yeah, the yeah. lifting it breaks tissues and stuff as well. So yeah. be careful weightlifters yeah. out there. <laughs> yes, be careful. Yeah, be careful if you're doing. I mean, they do say don't do strenuous exercise, right? And you know exactly while you're doing before diving. or so, after. Uh, you know the, the, the exactly. warning. The warning. The warnings are there. You know, but yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Which I tell you, in my environment, is a tough thing because we often have um, shore entries that can be quite strenuous. There's a lot of shore entries, so yes. that's the nice thing about a little board. Okay, so yeah. let's let's uh, let's get all the pitches here. So, what what are the things? How how can can divers support you? Right. So you've got you've got a YouTube channel. You've got a resort. Yes. You've yeah. got a book. Let, let's hear what what are. Uh... Yeah. So. Um... If you guys would like to come and see some of the diving that we discussed just now, then you can visit uh, scandydivers.com. So you can check out the website of the resort there and make uh, email inquiries into us directly from there. Uh, If you want to see my underwater movies, then you can check out Scuba Sheep Productions on YouTube and also on uh, Facebook as well. And then, yeah, I'm also pretty active on Facebook personally. Uh, Christian Mears is my uh, email, my Facebook uh, ad. And I also share quite a lot of my underwater videos uh, on my personal page as well. So that's the main channels. And then, of course, you can get the book, Confessions of a Dive Master, on Amazon, on paperback, and uh, ebook version as well. And maybe audiobook in the future. We'll see. <laughs> right. Good for we'll you, Chris. that one. Yeah. yeah. All righty. All right. And you, you sell, uh, what, pictures and video from there? Is that what people can? Um, I actually, you can buy my, uh, my video clips of sale on uh, Pond5, which is like, um, like a version of Shutterstock, basically. It's a place where you can buy. So I do have quite a few uh, of my clips for sale, basically, of, of video clips from around the world. All right, once again, if you'd like to support Chris, 
The Amazon link for his book is down below. It's physical or electronic Kindle. And also I have the other details of how you could follow and support Chris. Uh, Facebook, there are a couple websites there. Um, let's support Chris if we can. Alrighty, thanks again. See you next time.